Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Dakaya Drum Dude. Now today we're going to do something really special. I'm going to show you guys how to assemble a home studio for a low budget and the best part, it's going to fit inside your small Dhaka apartment. That's coming up next. So, to put things in perspective, I live in Dhaka in a small apartment and me and my younger brother share a very small bedroom, 100 square feet to be exact. So yeah, it's a very small space, but no problem, I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So the first thing we are going to want is a desk. Obviously you want it to be comfortable, ergonomic and to fit nicely inside your small room. Preferably near your windowsill or tucked away in a corner. I chose to place my desk near a windowsill because I like more natural light and open spacing. So for my desk, I chose a very small space saving one. It is only two by one and a half feet in my 100 square feet room. So yeah, very ergonomic and space saving. And it also has a little compartment that slides out so that you can keep your MIDI keyboard or regular keyboard or even just use it as storage. And you can fold it in when you're not using to save more space. So choose your desk, make sure it's comfortable and small and not that much space consuming, so you can tuck it away or keep it in a small corner. Okay, next step. Obviously, you're gonna want a laptop. Now, whether it runs on Mac or Windows OS, it doesn't matter, that's totally your preference. Now, you don't need a new laptop. If you have one lying around at home that's in good condition, with enough memory, that's great. Now, the next thing you're gonna need is a DAW, which is a digital audio workstation. Now that is going to be the software you're going to record, write, or do whatever you want when you're making music in your studio. Now on Mac obviously you get GarageBand free, and even though on Windows there isn't anything free when you buy it, you can get some free software over the internet, like um, Pro Tools First and Reaper and all other stuff. So the next thing you're going to want is a MIDI keyboard or MIDI controller. Now since it doesn't make any sounds of its own, you can either use a MIDI cable, uh, a standard 5-point MIDI cable, or a USB cable to plug into the laptop and program and play sounds from your laptop from your DAW. Now I'm not a keyboardist or a pianist, so I didn't go all out and buy a huge 88-key MIDI controller with weighted keys and whatnot, though you could if you want to. So I decided to buy a small 25-key controller from Melissa's called the Q25. It's very handy and portable. It's really cute. I like it. I like his personality. It has a data slider. It has a pitch wheel and a modulation wheel, which is pretty cool if you consider it being only 25 keys big. So the next thing you're going to want is an interface. Now, what is an interface, you ask? Well, it's a little device that converts your analog signals from your instruments and turns them into digital signals so that your computer can process and record them. So I chose a very small two-channel input interface by Behringer. Now this one has one XLR input with phantom power and another regular quarter-inch standard input. It also has a little headphone output so you can hear directly by DI and also has a little switch at the back so you can activate the phantom power to power your mics. Oh, sorry, a little mistake there. Um, interfaces can be small or big, depends on how many inputs you have on them. So yeah, just need to get that cleared up. Another optional thing you could buy is this little riser here. So yeah, I bought this one real cheap. I plugged it, <laughs> not plugged it, I hung it up on my window so, it could, uh, so I could keep my laptop above the desk. Now this could be a great uh, space saving option. If you don't have this uh, slide out compartment for your keyboard, if you can leave your laptop above the desk, you can move your keyboard up here. So it'll save a lot of space as well. And also it won't be sticking out as much. So yeah, that's another great sa uh, space saving tip for you guys. Next, we're gonna look at a microphone for your studio. Now when it comes to microphones, there are a lot of options in the market. You got condenser microphones, ribbon microphones, dynamic microphones, th the list goes on. There's a lot of different types. In my opinion, I would suggest to get a condenser microphone. Now these things give really great sound quality, but it comes with a little twist. You need 
you need an external power source for it via the XLR cable. Now an XLR cable is just the standard 3-pin cable that you plug into your mic. Now these things are powered by phantom power which can come from your interface like I mentioned earlier. Now I'm not a vocalist and I'm not that great at singing. I could try but you probably wouldn't watch my videos anymore. Not that anyone does but still. So yeah, I didn't really invest a lot in my mic, but you, you are willing to go as much as you want to that. But remember, keep it inside your budget. Now, last but not least, you're going to want something to hear your music. You can't listen to your music to your laptop speakers. I want to talk about your headphones or studio monitors. Why did I put both of them in the same category because here's this you're probably watching this video because you're in a small apartment and you yes you have noise complaints from your neighbors all the time you might so if you have studio monitors that's gonna add up to the problem a little bit because studio monitors can be a little pricey at times but you don't need studio monitors to make a great sounding mix you just need a nice pair of headphones and you're all set well the upside is is a lot more quieter you can hear your mix in and your music way closer in a closer proximity than speakers yes it is a downside that you won't be able to share your music as easy like to your family and friends at the same time but it is also going to save you from noise complaints and other hazards of living in a small neighborhood in Dhaka now here's some uh, miscellaneous items that you might need now if you buy some of your stuff second-handed they might not come with the full package in which they were intended to be sold in so one thing you might need to buy extra for your microphone is an XLR cable. So this is the standard 3-pin XLR cable which plugs into, your, into the back of your mic, right here. And another one you might want is a USB cable. Many MIDI devices these days run on MIDI USB instead of the traditional 5-pin MIDI. So it's just a USB plug with an old printer head on the other end. Oh, and you, all, you will also need this to plug in and power your interface. And the last thing you might want is a MIDI cable. Now if you have an older generation MIDI controller or some other tech which doesn't have a USB port, you might want to use these ones. These ones require to be plugged in via USB to receive power as well. So that's a small downside, but this has a MIDI in and a MIDI out. So you can plug in your old school MIDI devices via the five pin MIDI plug. So hopefully you guys found this tutorial interesting or helpful at least. So if you do, please uh, leave a like and a subscribe if you like this video. Share it if you want to. It'll really help me out and I really enjoy making these videos for you guys. Sorry I haven't been that frequent. I just have been lacking inspiration and sorry, a bit lazy to make these videos. I was running out of creativity, but now I'm back. Hopefully I'll be on a good streak again. So hopefully see you guys soon. Stay, stay home and stay safe. Bye guys.